guys, God bless. Welcome back to my channel. I am Charlene and this is a video that was, it wasn't necessarily requested, but she did ask what scriptures do I recommend? And I said that I was going to do a video concerning this, but things got really busy really quickly. Um, the topic of interest is uh, praying scripture over either the person or the situation or yourself um, regarding someone who is difficult to love or just a difficult person in general. Um, this is very important and very near and dear to my hot heart because uh, this year alone, I have been through some really, really difficult experiences. Um, I have a family member that refuses to talk to me at this point. I recently had a minister, a uh, individual who uh, decided to jump down my throat and left me confused. And honestly, there's a lot of stuff that I couldn't help but revert back to myself because I'm like, Lord, what is wrong with me? I mentioned to you guys in a very vulnerable, transparent way that I have a really, really hard time articulating myself in person, like weirdly cringy. Um, I have trouble carrying on conversations. I have trouble sometimes reading people and it could come off as uninterested or absent-minded or not caring. And obviously you guys should know by now that that is definitely not the case. Um, the beauty of planning a video and talking to you all is that I'm putting my all into the video in the moment versus, and I have time to think and dwell and, you know, but in face-to-face -face encounters, right there on the spot, it gets really difficult for me. And I more so want to do this video, not just for the person who can say, hey, there are some really hard to love people in my life. There are some really difficult people in my life. But I want you all to be able to apply this to yourself too. Um, because our words should be a reflecting mirror. We should be able to look in there and see all the things that are wrong with us too and see our part in the matter, like have accountability. And also for anybody who um, struggles to be comfortable around people who have mental illness, that's something that came to my mind and is near and dear to my heart as well because for people who are autistic or has Asperger's or um schizo and bipolar um it could be really difficult for someone who is foreign to that behavior um and i truly believe that these scriptures will provide a comfort and a peace and a plan for you going forth in the future for encountering uh the average difficult person you know because a lot of us may say hey i'm used to it because i am um, like I said, um, mental illness was dominant in my family and it's just another day for me. Like you, you deal with it, you know, you smile, you make them feel welcome and you move forward. But I know that's not everybody's case. There are some situations where you, it may catch you off guard. Um, especially, um, I have experienced a lot of bipolar depressed people, and literally it's like a light switch. Like you never know when it's going to happen. It just hits and it's just all gloomy and sad and dark. And he was like, you were just joking, you know, and it's hard. But again, I, I just keep thinking about the scripture. There's no temptation. Uh, there's no situation. I believe that um, is over or beneath us. I truly believe that in the time that Jesus walked the earth, that he encountered all kinds of people with all kinds of issues and problems. And I would even go as far as to say that I don't think the Gospels um, include every single thing. Um, I'm pretty sure there's days, times, and moments where there was no witness. And things took place and encounters happened that 
would make my statement true that I don't think we experienced anything more or less than he did as human beings on this earth. So let us go into scripture, of course, in reference to this particular topic. Um, you have one or two options, of course. You can, as you're reading along in the Bible, maybe certain scriptures and things will stick out to you and you will feel like, oh, I can apply that to this situation. Or you can simply type in um, how to deal with people with mental illness or difficult people or indifferent people. Well, however you entitle it, there should be scriptures that come up to you. And I want to focus on a few of those as well. Um, this one, the first one is one that comes up a lot. Let me make sure I'm in the view here. And this is Proverbs uh, 15, 1. No, excuse me. 15 Proverbs. That's the problem. I'm looking like, ah, oh, that, that doesn't say that. <laughs> All right. And I really, truly want you guys to be in a mindset of prayer over this topic and subject because it's very sensitive. Um. I'm pretty sure that even someone who suffers or experiences this on a regular basis, well, this will probably make them emotional because sometimes when we don't think things are spelled out exactly to a T to our situation and problem in the Bible, that we don't have anything to help us. And that's not true. There is a lot of underlying issues that can be addressed with scripture and we just have to pry over pry open scripture, we have to consult God and he will lead and guide you. And um, like I said, I'm praying and my mindset is on this heavily because like I said, this is something near and dear to my heart because I am one person who gets misunderstood all the time. Um, at once one time, people said I was mean or stuck up. Um, you know, the list goes on and I just want people out there to realize that um, there's obviously two sides to every story. But these scriptures can be applied to all parties, one party, two parties involved in the situation. All right. Proverbs 15 and 1 says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. I would say that you want to be careful with anyone who's um, bipolar or schizophrenia. Um, the key in practice and research has definitely been uh, softness, gentleness, which is things that we should already be equipped with to handle such people. Um, each situation can vary and be different, but um, there is so much rooted in being gentle and being quiet and being soft in our word that you can't go wrong. You just can't go wrong. Um, and on the contrary, um, there's so much evidence to prove that, hey, if you're harsh, if you're mean, if you're aggressive, you're going to cause more problems than you would like to have. Uh, the next scripture I have here is Romans uh, 12, 18. This is a scripture that kind of convicted me because... I had a worldly mindset towards difficult people. My thing was, you stay away from me. I stay away from you. We don't have to worry about anything. But in God's word, it tells us to love our neighbors. And as I was mentioning before, I think we should get to a point where we don't even consider ourselves having any enemy outside of Satan, our flesh, and the world. When it's a brother and sister in Christ, we should not view them as the enemy at all, whether they're doing us wrong or not, because we're all God's children and neither one of us are perfect. So with that being said, this next verse, um, Romans 12 and hold on. 12 and 18. Okay, I was right. I had it in my mind, but I wanted to make sure. All right, 12 and 18 reads, um, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And that's interesting how the ESV translation worded, because a lot of the other translations, like if, as much as possible, live peaceably. Um, but this particular uh, scripture says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, because you can't control nobody else. 
You can't put restrictions on other people. You can't tell people what to do per se. Um, we're talking you as much as you can control, as much as you can handle, as much as it is possible for you to live peaceably with all. And all means all, not who we choose to, not who is nice, not who loves us, not who treat us right, not who um, caters to us or supports us or is really good to us and kind and gentle to us and praising us, not just them, but all. Very important scripture there. Um, let me see here. Matthew 7, 12. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 7 and 12. A very known scripture as well. Matthew 7 and 12. 7 and 12. And it reads, And if you had... Oh, no, no, no. That's not it. 7 and 12. What am I doing? I literally did the opposite. Did y'all just see that? <laughs> All right, so this is considered the golden rule. And it says, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So all the law and all the prophets sum up to treat others as you will want to be treated. And we have to put ourselves in other people's shoes in order to have this concept full circle. What if we were the one with schizophrenia? What if we were the one that was bipolar or have autism or Asperger's or um, anxiety or depressed? How will we want people to handle us? That is very, very important. Like how you answer that and how you feel about that. And not just a, a, a persona of niceness because you get that a lot with Christians. Like it's just like, oh, you know, like you're afraid to touch you're afraid to be around. You're just so standoffish. I can tell you from experience, even with someone with the most uh, strong will mental health issues, they can tell when people are doing this. I don't know how and when we get to a point where um, maybe the person doesn't comprehend or isn't aware, but I truly believe and I've seen for myself that no matter how far gone you think they are mentally, when you are standoffish, when you're being irregular and different towards them, they know and they can tell. And it does hurt their feelings because they have feelings just like us. Um, and even I'm putting myself in a situation because I have anxiety, like I have clinical diagnosed anxiety. And I see it all the time where people just like, yikes, she's anxious or, oh, uh, she's rambling. Like they give you that look. They, uh, and it's one thing to like be caught off guard and be like, huh? But that has happened too. But there has been so many other um, incidents where it's just like a frown, like, why are you doing that? Or can you stop doing that? And I, I go back to my conversation I had about anxiety in the first place, like, uh, people are conditioned to believe that if you just choose to stop having anxiety, that it's going to go away. And it's like, no, this is the thorn in my flesh. Now, I, I let's be clear. I do not limit God. Like, I, if he can and will take this away, then so be it. He definitely has brought me a long way. And I have hope and faith that he can deliver me. But at the same time, if he choose not to, I'm perfectly fine knowing that God is still who he is and he still loves me because he knows better than I. But anyway, let me highlight this scripture. But as the Bible said, the sum of the prophets and the law can be summed up in loving and treating people how you want to be treated. Remember that. Okay, let's see what other scriptures I have here for you. And y'all, as late as you guys are, you can probably get this video. I'm just like, Lord, thank you for bringing it back to my uh, remembrance because this is important. This was one that I was like, oh, I got to do a video on this because I can relate to it so well. And I'm, I've been on in both parties, in both positions. I've been the one who was probably difficult, well, 
difficult to love, difficult to understand. And I've been the one witnessing the exposure and experience to the person who is difficult. Um, let's go to Galatians 5 and 14. Galatians 5 and 14. All right, 5 and 14 says, For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So once again, not only are we treating people as we want to be treated, but we're loving them as we love ourselves. And you don't have any restrictions, restraints when it comes to loving yourself. Yes, we can have self-esteem issues. Yes, we can have um, identity issues like as far as trying to figure out who we are. Um, and try to accept our lives and stuff. But deep down inside of all of us, we love and care for ourselves on a level that goes beyond what we do towards others. And it's uh, it's something to be worked on. Like we're not perfect. But here in our Bible, it, it literally tells us in black and white, you should love your neighbor as yourself. So as much as you do love yourself and do care for yourself, you want to give that same type of love towards others, especially children of God. Okay, so that's already underlined per se. But let me see. I got so many of these highlighters. Let's try this out. And these are the gel highlighters from Mr. Penn, by the way. I keep saying I need to showcase their items because they were gracious enough to give them to me. And I kind of just put them to the side. But anyway, um... Matthew 7 and 1. Matthew 7 and 1. Uh, many of you probably already know it before I even get to it. But one, this scripture has been used as a defense against people who want to and are willing to sin. And 7 1 says, Judge not that you be judged. And I'm just going to go on and read for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So this is something, this is a scripture, this whole block of scriptures, verses one through six. I took time one day and dissect this scripture. I took it apart, put it back together. And a lot of people, um, feel like the Bible is kind of contradicting because there's parts in the Bible that talks about judging. And then this one here says, don't judge. But in sum, I want, when it's my time to stand before God, I want him to exercise all the grace and mercy he can. And this is what it means for others around us. Like people do wrong. People make mistakes. Sin is sin. No one's not saying that, but have grace. Like, um, for years, you've seen the person with mental health issues or intellectual disabilities get picked on and bullied for something that they absolutely can't help. And I have always been the one to say, well, I'll be their friend. I'll hang with them. I'll talk to them and not treat them that way because they don't deserve it. And... I don't want to just ridicule and bully anyone for something they can't control and mistreat them and push them away. Um, I have enough, I know God has enough grace for me. I have, I can have enough grace for someone else. Um, they can't control themselves. And that doesn't mean that they don't deserve conversation, that they don't deserve to be hugged or um, treated with respect and et cetera, et cetera. Like, these are the things that we look out for. Like, cause mind you, regular average Joe people who don't do anything wrong. They don't say anything wrong. They know how to communicate effectively. Um, they know how to talk to you. They know how to engage. Like, how can you practice, you know, not judging or loving and treating as you want to be treated? Like you, you can't, they're perfect. Their interactions are going to be perfect. But to the people who have imperfect interactions imperfect speech this is where you have to practice all these things that you learn in god's word 
Okay, so let me see what's next here. Okay, right on the Monday. Luke, we were just talking about it a little bit anyway. Luke 6. Luke 6, 27 through 36. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To the one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you. And from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do to them also. So, love all. Love all. Be kind to all. Be giving to all. Do not restrict yourself from anyone because of how they are who they are, or what kind of disabilities they have. I know that even as a Christian, as a God-fearing Christian, so many of us have been in positions and situations where um, you unconsciously or consciously try to avoid certain people. Um, you stay away. Um, you don't fully acknowledge them. Oh, it just goes on and on and on. But we have to do better. We have to do what the word of God says. We have to show grace and mercy. We have to love no matter what. We have to practice patience. We have to treat others as we want to be treated. We have to do all these things, no matter how difficult they are, no matter what their intellectual disability is, no matter what. We have no excuse. We have no justification. According to God's word, we are to treat them just like we would treat ourselves and want to be treated. So, um, those are just a few scriptures to meditate on. I'm going to stop right here. Um, probably going to make a part two to this and get some more scriptures together. Um, let me know if you will benefit for part two and I will more than likely uh, try to have that done for you. Um, but definitely want to get you something to get things rolling right now. Um, to meditate on those scriptures and pray over the situation and just be kind and gentle and be forgiving and practice your patience. I love you guys. God bless. Take care. Bye.